Greetings to all my Physics 4DS students. This is the last, last lecture in our Conservation of Energy Unit, Unit 5. We're going to talk about a pendulum, the plural being pendula, because you see how the potential energy, gravitational potential energy, and kinetic energy are related to each other in a pretty cool way. And we see pendula all over the place. If you go to the Red River X, that uh, pirate boat that swings back and forth, and it's always fun to be at the extreme edge of those with your hands in the air like you just don't care. That is an example of a pendulum. A grandfather clock is a pendulum. Put a metronome upside down, that's a pendulum. So um, when someone in the old movies tries to hypnotize you using a stopwatch, and it oscillates or vibrates back and forth around an equilibrium position. That's an example of a pendulum as well. So this is on page 8 and page 9 in your booklet. We aren't using the mini text anymore. That We're finished with that. Everything else in the course deals with the booklet. Um, so we have a picture of a pendulum. Let me just put a box around it here. And... Uh, I have to add my notes, don't I? Okay. There we go. And so we have the point that uh, if it was a stopwatch, the chain of the stopwatch or pocket watch actually would be held by your fingers and then you would be uh, pulling the pocket watch back at an angle and then releasing the pocket watch. It's also called a bob, B-O-B. The dangly part at the bottom of the string is called a bob. So the bob will go and then go through equilibrium and then come back. And if there's no friction, this could last forever. Uh, so an interesting side point that I do like to have the students understand and do calculations on is the period of the bob in the pendulum and the period is given by this equation 2 pi times the square root of L over G where L is the length of the string or the chain and G is the gravitational constant so what's interesting there is it doesn't matter about the mass of the bob, the period is going to be the same. Uh, further, if the angle is extreme, let's say like 85 degrees, then this equation falls apart a bit. But in most survey courses, introductory courses in physics, we don't go to such an extreme angle. So our uh, equation will work okay. So as the period goes up, the length of the pendulum goes up has its square root, assuming that the gravitational field constant doesn't change. If the gravitational field constant gets smaller, then the period goes up has the root of the gravitational field constant. So that's uh, how it works. We got I snuck in frequency there, which is 1 over... Uh, the period. Um, so let's try two quick examples of those and then we'll get into the conservation of energy idea. Uh, Milky Way worksheet. No, that's not a Milky Way worksheet anymore. It's just some practice. So don't worry about what the Milky Way is. Let's say L is one meter. So the chain is one meter and the period is 13.3 seconds. We can find out what the gravitational field constant is. So if we've got a stopwatch and maybe it's on Venus instead of on Earth, you could get what the gravitational field constant is. So we want to solve for G, so we square both sides to get rid of the square root sign. So the period squared equals 4 pi squared L over G. Isolate for G, so it's 4 pi squared L over the period. I keep forgetting to put in these little ticks, these little serifs of the period. So 4 pi squared times 1 divided by 13.3 squared, and you get 0.223 meters per second squared. So that is the gravitational field constant uh, in this situation. So uh, if you're a space traveler, always bring a pendulum with you 
so you can find out what the gravitational field constant is. Second example, let's call that example two. Uh, if I'm given a length of 0.3 meters and a period of 1.16 seconds, I can get the gravitational field constant, and that's 8.8 .8 meters per second squared. And I'm sure you can find some pendulum uh, videos on the YouTube where there's astronauts playing with pendulum uh, in the International Space Station. Chris Hadfield, of course, is a star of that, and he's Canadian, of course. Um, now, uh, example three on page nine, we have a length of 0.65 meters, and the mass is three kilograms. We'll use that a little later. Let's get the period. So I'm assuming I'm on Earth. Okay, so in example three, page nine, Assume we're on Earth. And to one decimal place, the gravitational field constant is 9.8 newtons per kilogram or 9.8 meters per second squared. So the period is 2 pi times the square root of L, which is given as 0.65 meters over G 9.8. So it takes 1.62 seconds for you to be in this starting point, point A, go through B, go to the other side, go back to B, and then back up to A. So that whole motion to go back up to A is going to be um, 1.62 seconds. The frequency would be the reciprocal of that. And uh, let's now, in point B, sorry, in, in, in part B of this example, let's get the um, relationship between the Mechanical, uh, well, the total mechanical energy is always the same. Let's get the relationship between the gravitational potential energy and the kinetic energy. So, at point B, you're at the bottom of your trajectory. We're going to take that as my relative zero. Therefore, my height is zero, which I see over here. So, my height is zero. So the total mechanical energy at that point has to all be kinetic. Now you're given the 2.3 meters per second squared. You're given the mass. Okay, so the 2.3 meters per second squared is given. So it becomes 1 half times 3 times 2.3 squared. So your total mechanical energy is 7.94 joules. At point A, where you've lifted it to the highest point in this trajectory, your holding the bob so there is no initial velocity. The initial velocity is zero, which means all that energy at the beginning is in gravitational potential energy, and it's labeled... Uh, no, it's not labeled. We have to find out what that height is, okay? So 7.94 joules equals mgh. So your initial height is going to be... Uh, your total mechanical energy over mg, E total over mg, and it's 0.27 meters, okay? Be careful here. It's not, some students think, oh, well, it's the length of the string. No, it's not. The We have raised the bob up at an angle. If you want to do fancy schmancy stuff, you could actually calculate the angle, but we won't bother with that at the moment. Uh, so it's not 0.65 meters, it's just 0.27. And if there was no friction on the other side, A would go to up to 0.27 meters as well. Okay, so now you may wonder, well, what about an intermediate point? And that's what we see uh, down here, where we want to calculate the velocity at that intermediate point, which is not 0.27 meters up from the reference, but just 0.15. So it's somewhere in the middle between all kinetic energy and all potential energy. The total energy is still 7.94 joules, just like with roller coasters. Once you get that total mechanical energy, that has to stay conserved at every point in your motion. So uh, that 7.94 joules equals Eg plus Ek. So mgh plus one-half mv squared. 
Um, so at that point, what's the question asked? It was asked for the velocity. So 7.94 minus mgh equals 1 half mv squared. The mass is 3, the g is 9.8, the h is 0.15 meters. Okay, based on that drawing. And that equals 1 half times 3 times v squared. So you isolate for the velocity, take the square root, and the velocity is 1.53 uh, meters per second. So notice it's not zero, it's more than zero, but it's not as high as 2.3. And it's always a good idea in physics to look at the extremes and then look at things in the middle. And that's exactly what we have going on here. Okay, let's see here. We got another example. And here we have it looks like someone's up on a hill a bit and they're pushing someone in a swing and that person so you push there's someone else pushing pushing this person in a swing swings down back up and on and on and on so we want to get the velocity at the bottom that'll be our maximum velocity right because then gravity takes hold and you start slowing down. So you're at your fastest at the bottom of your pendulum. So uh, this should say 1.5 meters. So 1.5 meters is the height at which things are released. So it's all gravitational potential energy at the top there. So the mass times 9.8 times 1.5. They don't give you the mass here. So we'll just write M. Uh, and that's okay because the mass is going to cancel out. So 9.8 times 1.5 times M. So at the top, it's 14.7 times M. At the bottom of the trajectory, all of the energy is kinetic. So your total energy, 14.7 M, equals 1 half MV squared. And you see the M's cancel. So 2 times 14.7, take the square root. At the bottom, you're going at 5.42 meters per second squared. No, sorry, it's not meters per second squared, just meters per second. So let's cancel out that two there. Okay, the next example, we have a four kilogram uh, object. And you want to get... 4.4 meters is the length of the string. We want to look at a point 1.69 meters up. So um, at the bottom, 1 half times 4 times 7.6 squared is 115.52 joules. So that's the total energy at the bottom. It's all um, kinetic. So that is going to be the total energy, 115.52 at anywhere. So it's this intermediate point. Let's look at this. So it's 1 half times 4 times, oh, we want to get the speed at that intermediate, times v squared plus 4 is your mass, You're given that, times g times 1.69. So we, in fact, we don't use the 4.4 meters for anything in that question, do we? Or the 52 degrees. So... Um, you just and you're given 1.69 so we don't even use the 2.71 for anything so this question sort of is tumbling away but anyways you would get 4.96 meters per second so uh, on a test expect one of these styles of questions and one like at the bottom here uh, which is an interesting one um, by what factor would the string length be longer or shorter in a pendulum on Venus versus one on Earth if the periods stay the same. So if the periods stay the same, then the two pi's cancel out. So you end up with the squaring both sides. The length of the pendulum on Venus over its gravitational field constant is the length of the pendulum on Earth over its gravitational field constant. So the length of the pendulum on Venus will just be 0.9, so 9 tenths of the length on that on Earth, 
if they're going to have the same period. So you can make a uh, comparisons between two different planets or uh, any two different uh, locations if the gravitational field constants are different in those two locations. Okay, some general practice on this chapter. If you uh, go, and I'm going to let you, you know where the website is now, you better. <laughs> so uh, you can try um, questions on swordfish and dogfish. And uh, there was also an assignment Z that is due sooner or later. I'll put that in Edsby when that's going to be due. And then what happens after uh, projectile? Well, we looked at the portion of mass on a spring that we needed to know. I didn't look at all components of it because I left a bit out. Uh, and then we get to electrostatics. Well, electrostatics is unit six. So uh, we're going to have a test soon on unit five. And uh, so do those questions, swordfish, dogfish, do the assignment, practice, and all will be good. Talk to you later.